What up, guys? Welcome back. I'm trying to think where I want to be today. Got to fire up the aminos here. Got the budget car running. Um, obviously, we can't drive it yet because I don't have brakes or anything on it, but it runs. I got the S300 V1 that's in the car. I don't know what ECU it is. I think it's a P28. I'm, I feel like it's got issues, and I actually talked to Hunter from Hunter Tune, and we kind of talked a little about the issues I was having and I was under the assumption the S300 V1 board was having issues he on the other hand says it's the ECU so I'm gonna step outside and kind of show you the issues that I'm having with this thing compare it to my new ECU I bought I bought an S300 uh, V3 in an ECU already um, I was gonna try and just buy the board and just put it in the computer but after Hunter kind of talked me away from that, I was like, well, hell, I probably need to buy a whole new ECU too. Um, like I said, I knew this ECU kind of had problems after I got it and I pulled it apart and saw some stuff on the board that I didn't like. Um, it was kind of a shot in the dark at, you know, whether it was gonna work or not. I'll step outside, the car's not in here, so it's gonna be freaking cold and show you what issues I'm having with the old V1 board and we'll see if the new v3 board fixes that issue and some of the other issues that we're having that we're going to try and fix today as well so let's get into today's video all right so here's a little v1 like i said i think this is a p28 yeah p28 ecu so i've had a tune in it as you saw in like the last video and if you didn't like i said go back check that out there we go so there you can see we got one green light here well, i'll be darn look that went green real fast it hasn't done that before wow that was weird that was really weird that thing's never well <laughs> go <laughs> go figure anyways what it have been doing is maybe, maybe it's got something to do with this wiring or something Maybe there's like, cause I don't know, weird. Um, but yeah, normally it wouldn't be lit up in green. It would be red. It would be red for a long time. And uh, let me hop in here and start this up. But yeah, in the last video, you could actually see where I was messing with the laptop and then like, it just randomly like it had this red light every time you turn the key on if you shut the key off the tune would disappear turn it back on and it would be lit up red you would just let it sit for a long period of time and then poof all of a sudden it was like the tune was in it the light would turn green and the pump would prime it, it was so weird well it starts it runs um a little breakdown on this car we're, we're gonna give you a little breakdown of the build i'm just gonna tell you about it so, right quick while this thing heats up or warms up this is lsv tech sorry for the rattling these solid mounts or these thick urethane mounts are kind of noisy and the car doesn't like to mm, no i see it idling real low and died so i gotta keep my foot on the gas So LSV Tech, it's got some cheap I-beam rods that I bought online. I'm trying to like just fill them out and see if they're any good. They rate them at like a thousand horsepower. Um, they actually look a lot like my Crower I-beams that are in the race car, but they're not Crower I-beams. You could tell they were just a little different, you know, the, the material wasn't quite as good. Um, I did put ARP rod bolts in it because I wasn't real trusting of the ones that were in it when I got it. Um, they didn't look very good quality. So I felt like if the rod wanted to stand a chance, I needed to put a better rod bolt in it. Nippin Racing GSR, like P72 Turbo Pistons is like their, their newest version of it. Their new like Gen 2 piston or whatever. It's cast piston, cheap rod. I think I, I think I got like 300 bucks in the rods and pistons. So pretty cheap. And then, you know, 
standard ARP head studs. It's got a Cometic head gasket. Um, I used ACL bearings in it. Actually, no, I take that back. I used King bearings in it. Stock GSR head. It's got the uh, like GSR intake and exhaust uh, valve spring. So you did like the dual valve spring mod. We always call it like ITR springs, basically. Stock springs. I put an upgraded retainer in it because I've had issues with running stock springs like that. I've had stock retainers break, so I put a chromoly retainer in it. They were, I think they were Brian Crower retainers. Just kind of a little reassurance. Outside of that, it's a BS6162, which is basically a GTR35, GT35R, basically. T3. It's a basically like a Rev9 or eBay ram horn manifold. All the custom piping and stuff I built. It's got these hand-me-down 1600cc like Bosch style injectors they're pretty old because they've got like the OBD1 connector on it and most of the injectors you get nowadays won't have that type of in the injector connector on it or the clip so they're just old and I had one actually die on me here recently when I was sitting here in the driveway messing with this ECU issue trying to get the car to run and one of the injectors just quit and luckily I had a spare one in the cabinet but it was it had issues so i put it in the tester and flow test them all and these injectors were kind of all over the place within like i don't know five six seven percent of each other but the one that i had that was an extra one actually leaked under pressure so once you shut it off you know and the fuel system still has pressure and that one injector is going to leak into that cylinder so obviously when you start the car up it kind of runs rough because it's got it's got fuel sitting in it which is not good so I haven't really tried to run the car much with these injectors, but this ECU was having issues and I just said to hell with it. So now this thing is being completely normal. So before here, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you kind of what I'm, what I'm doing. All right, so before, like it's sitting there idling, you can see it's like a thousand RPM. Look at the air fuel over here, like 15s. So every other time I've had this V1 in here, it has the red light issue and the air fuel always reads really funny. So like normally sitting here in idle, it would always read like 11.5 air fuel. And I'm like, there's no way this thing's running at 11.5 air fuel. And I played with the tune and stuff and I would pull fuel out of it. And if I got it up into the 13s, it just acted like it didn't want to run at all. But now here we are sitting here. It's showing 15s now, same tune. Like it's the same thing I've had in this SV or this uh, S300 V1. And now it's showing it's idling like high 14s, low 15s, which is a little leaner than I would like. But before, like I said, it was showing like 11s. So I'm like, I just left it there and it seemed like it idled good. But I started up now the one day it doesn't have issues and now it's showing it's like idling you know where you would normally probably have a four-cylinder turbo car idle at on pump gas so i started this video out with hopes to show you an issue with this and like some of the concerns i had with it so i could put my uh v3 board in and hopefully fix these problems <laughs> but now it uh kind of has a mind of its own so i guess we'll keep moving on with this video and i can't show you the problem i was having because now it's not there so <laughs> i don't i don't know what to make of that anyways i'm kind of gonna let the car warm up here and uh, as you can tell it's cold and it's like 20 degrees outside so uh i'll switch these out i already got the tune in the v3 board here and then the good thing about the v3 board is is we're gonna add um oil pressure and fuel pressure so we can data log and see all that information on the live stream you know with the laptop and the good thing with this is, is you can actually do bluetooth so i can like make a little mount or something up here and like bluetooth my phone and have live data readout on my uh um, on my phone through the honda app which i need to upload to my phone now that i'm thinking about because i haven't done it yet but that's all something maybe we'll get into in this video but uh yeah, I want to be able to see fuel pressure and oil pressure. Uh, the dummy light doesn't really do it for me. And uh, especially on a new motor and all that stuff, I like to monitor and, you know, keep track of oil pressure and fuel pressure issues, you know, if something were to arise. But anyways, I'm going to switch these out. 
and we'll see uh, if it runs any different. It's the exact same tune from this la or from this ECU and that one. So we'll see if uh, maybe startups any different and our idles any different. All right, so we got the V3 board hooked up, and uh, let's start it up and uh, see if it acts any different. So in all reality, let our wideband heat up here. This thing's so noisy, like the, the vibrations and stuff and like the noise, you can hear things rattling, which granted this, a lot of this car isn't completely like assembled as far as like the fenders and stuff are completely bolted down and like all that stuff. Oh, there our wideband goes. So yeah, like that's a pretty good like place to be as far as idle. It seems like it jumps around a lot and that could be like injector data or something. Cause like I said, these injectors are pretty inconsistent. So, I mean, ideally I would like to only see it jump like a, like a, you know, I won't even say a point, like point two or three tenths, um, not five, like point five, maybe it looks more even than than that so we'll say like 13.5 to 14.5 so like a solid point that thing jumps around at idle which i'm not a huge fan of it's pretty uh pretty responsive yeah so overall um like i said i can't really show you the problem it was having maybe if i change it out here in a little bit maybe it'll show me that problem again but uh yeah let's uh show you what this exhaust sounds like I'll show you the motor setup it actually kind of sounds kind of poppy which Hunter actually in some of his videos has said that like these older style like big injectors they don't like to idle down low like that and they'll kind of do that but yeah um, idle's pretty smooth, at least it sounds smooth up here, but the exhaust note says otherwise. Uh, looks like I got a little fuel leak there. See it dripping out of that little fitting there. Watch it. Wait for it, there it goes. So I'm gonna get that in and fix that. I think the those little cheap lines, I just don't think are very good. So I'm gonna have to pull all that off and double check all that. It's just looking pretty good. Oh yeah, look at all that. What is all that? that fuel I can't tell what that is, is that water Did that just spring like a water leak all of a sudden I don't what that is I have to figure that out that's a lot whatever whatever it is I see stuff leaking here but I think that's fuel yeah that's fuel I wonder where all that's coming from because that's a lot. Looks like it's condensation leaking out of the exhaust. You can kind of see it down there. You can see like the puffs of air coming out of that V band too. So I'm going to go through and tighten that up. But yeah. Anyways, I think we're going to move the Mustang out because I have something else for this car. We're going to try and uh, put in here. Let's see if we can cure this little, like, poppy idol. Because I'm not a huge fan of that. I think that sounds terrible. So, anyways, we're going to move the Mustang. We'll pull this inside and do a little bit of work here. So, heater's coming on, of course. It's going to make all the noise while I'm trying to video. ECU was having problems. Then it decided to not have problems. That's besides the point. Um, like I said, these injectors have issues. So we're gonna try and fix that problem today as well. And we're gonna do that with a little something something from our boy Hunter over at Hunter Tunes. Um, you know, this is a budget build. Normally I would run my South Bay injectors and everything. Um, but as far as like budget friendly goes and Hunter's, you know, doing a lot of research on these new injectors. These are his 1500s. So, we're going to try a set of these out in this car with the budget in mind. Um, he sells four 1500cc injectors for 250 bucks, And 
you know, I'm trying to keep all the costs down on this car um, overall. Like I said, normally I would have tried to put my South Bay injectors in it. And South Bays are great. I use them in literally everything. Um, if budget wasn't an issue, um, I would use South Bays in this. But with Hunter's new option for a budget-friendly injector, I really wanted to give them a shot, you know, and just see kind of how they work. He does send them with all the injector data. So I got that put into the tune for the car. So we saw how it ran. I'm going to swap these injectors out. I'm going to attempt to fix that fuel leak because that drives me nuts. And I might jack it up and tighten up that V-band down low, make sure that's not leaking a bunch. But we're going to swap these injectors out and we'll throw the tune in it. See if it starts up, see how it idles. Um, everything is the exact same. I've not changed anything in the fuel table or none of that stuff. All literally I've done is gone in and changed the injector size in the Han data and the injector data. So we'll get these put in, start this thing up and see how it runs on these new injectors. So we're gonna pop these old injectors out. and. It's the OEM connectors, see if I can get you a good view, have these little metal clip on them right here. These things can be a pain. Um, so I usually get a pick and kind of pop them out with a pick, just like that. Get it to where it kind of pops out of the groove and then you can pop them back out. But make sure in the process you clip them back on it so whenever you go back onto the injector, um, everything snaps in and you don't have to mess with the clip again. So I had to pull the rail all the way off. Um, I know in one of Hunter's last videos, he talked about these injectors and he talked about the O-rings on these things. And they're actually a pretty small O-ring, wherever I put the rest of my injectors at. Oh, they're still in the holes here. Um, I mean, the O-rings aren't that big. If you look at the body of the top hat, they're not huge. But I will say, like, if you look at the hole on this, China Coyo Star um, eBay rail I got. The, uh, the lighting kind of sucks. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. But you just like, as soon as you start to push it in there, I mean the, the O-rings just like the perfect size to be just too big. So uh, it kind of like spits itself out in spots. Let's see if I can, oh, that one went, I got a, ton you can see i got a ton of silicone paste on it this go around but yeah i wanted to like scream as i was putting these in or trying to put the rail in with like with it all installed in the car it was not not jiving with me here Let's see like so you can see it right just they just wanted to pop out as you kind of push them down in there. So I got it down in there and I'll kind of wiggle them up and down a little bit, make sure the O-ring's nice and, oh, really? That one goes in really easy, that's weird. That hole's probably different on that, that one. Okay, well, now we can slap the rail back in it. Don't mind this sensor right here. This is a coolant temp sensor. I've got a uh, pressure transducer coming so we can monitor fuel pressure. So I just got that in there for now so we don't have a leak because I didn't have an eighth inch pipe plug for that. All right, so we got the rail all bolted down. One thing I noticed with these injectors and I don't, I'm not sure why, um, but with my old ones, I could use the old like stock rail spacers with, but I felt like this one, if I run the stock rail spacers, it felt like the injector would move up and down. I didn't want that. so. I just opted to pull them out and it like pretty much snugged everything up. Um, you know, they still have a little bit of wiggle in them, but not like they were going to if I uh, ran the spacers. So, but uh, yeah, so we got those in there uh, with the fuel line and everything hooked back up. I believe they're all plugged in correctly. So only other thing I'm gonna do real quick is trying to fix this fuel line right here that leaks. Um, I don't know if it's the fitting or what it is, so I may end up having to find a new line entirely for that. So I'm going to pull it off real quick, pull that little filter off with it, and see if I can get it to seal up, put it back on, and then we'll upload the new 
tune or upload the tune with the new injector data and we'll try and fire this thing up and see how it runs. All right, so we're going to upload this change. I need to check the, uh, I need to check and make sure we don't have any fuel leaks or nothing. Um, so, we go in here, open existing file. I've got it saved in here. LS VTEC GT35R HT1500 pump gas startup. All right, open that up. And then, uh, ooh, that's messing with the camera. Go near the parameters. Maybe. Come on. There it is. Okay, let's make sure our fuel injector information is right. Yep. Um, he didn't give information for like 6 volts and 18 volts. So I just kind of like picked a number and just kind of ran with it. All his information was 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. But not 6 and 18. So... I just kind of fudge some numbers in there. It'll probably never matter um, since this 8 volts to 16 volts is kind of the range normally for most all of them anyhow. So uh, we're going to update changes. All right, all that should be in there. Let's just go live here. There you go, negative 4 PSI. It's funny because air fuel here shows 12.7. Up there shows 13.2. There's probably some kind of discrepancy in the sensor. I can probably go in. Uh, close it advance. Maybe that's it there. Voltage offset. So it shows 13.2 on the gauge and 12.8 here just sitting here like stagnant. Let's just see. What point to? There we go. Thirteen four, thirteen three, thirteen two, thirteen three. I can probably change that a little bit more. I just put point two volts offset. Let's say one point eight. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. I would rather it be uh, even there. So we'll check for fuel leaks and then we'll try and start this thing up and then we'll actually compare the uh, air fuel from the gauge to the computer here. But I'm gonna prime the pump a couple more times and make sure it's not leaking anywhere. Okay, don't hear any leaks. feel anything on my line there so I guess we can start it up I that heater turned off <sighs> okay let's try and start it we'll prime it one more time and uh, see what happens that was anticlimactic That's why it's running bad. Let's just click up a few times. It's 
showing like super lean. That's weird. percent at it and it's literally showing nothing that can't be right what's their fuel show 22.2 22.4 22 weird oh well, let's not kill myself in the shop here with it running so we're gonna play with that and see what we can figure out all right so we got it running and uh, still having some issues with the idling and stuff. I'm no tuner, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, just slowly buttoning up some things on this car, getting this build sorted out. And uh, hopefully we can get this thing on the dyno uh, before winter comes. If we can get a decent tune on this car, then, uh, <clears throat> You know, when, when spring comes and we start buttoning up all the suspension and doing the rear disc brakes and all that stuff and just really buttoning it down, um, you know, if we got a tune on it, then we can start driving it straight up right then and there and not have to wait for a tune. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video, guys. It's getting cold. I can get in the house. But uh, don't forget, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one.